This is Harding Football with Coach Ronnie Huckabee. Hi and welcome to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bisons went down to Arkadelphia on Saturday and lost a tough football game 26 21 and coach I saw you after the football game and uh, I could tell that you were still very proud of your team's effort in that kind of an environment a big football game and your football team went on the road and, and gave a great effort on the road. I was really proud of our our team in general Billy our coaches our players you know we put a lot into that football game and our kids played hard I mean they played their guts out <clears throat> and that's why I hurt so much uh, you know it was that was a really tough defeat uh, you know, you're not allowed to dwell on it because you got to, you know, get right back ready to place another or to face another really good football team this week. So, but I, I think it's important to talk about how you respond to a defeat like that, how you how you accept a defeat like that. It says a lot about your culture, and you know we've talked before on this show about the difference between transactional coaching and transformational coaching. And transactional coaching is all about the bottom line. And if, you're, if your culture is a transactional culture, then when you get beat, you look for somebody to blame. You know, it was this guy's fault or, you know, it was this coach's fault or whatever. But when you're involved in a transformational culture, which is designed to help every individual in the culture become a better person, a better man, uh, then you look at yourself and you say, what could I have done better to help us win that football game? And if every person on our football team examines himself in that way, then we're going to be, we're going to be a better team for it. Uh, we constantly in our culture talk about the value of persistence, how important that is for a man, how important that is for a person, how important that is for a Christian to continue to pers persist when you're faced with adversity. And, uh, you know, I'm so proud of our guys, and I'm talking when I say our guys, our coaches, our players, everybody associated with our program, you know, that's our mindset now. You know, we have been given a, uh, an opportunity to grow, not one that we would have chosen. And uh, because of that, we get a chance to display our ability to persist. And, uh, you know, I fully expect that to be evident this week in practice as we get ready to, you know, to face a really good Henderson team. It is very difficult to win on the road. Your football team, before uh, the loss on Saturday, had won 11 straight regular season football games on the road. What kind of a statement is that about this program? I think it's a strong statement. I, you know, I, we feel real good about the way we're playing football right now, and I've said that before on the show. Uh, you know, we think the run game travels really well. We, we feel like we play great defense. We, pl we play with a lot of passion and effort. Uh, when you do that, you're going to, you know, fly the football. You're going to cause turnovers, and you know, if you can win the turnover battle on the road, that's a huge deal. Uh, and we've done it a lot. We didn't happen to do it this past uh, week. We lost by one turnover, uh, but still, if you look back over the course of the last, you know, two three years and the way we played on the road, uh, I, I think it's it is an indication of how we have chosen to play the game, run the football throw it for big plays, play great defense, be solid in the area of special teams. And when you do that, you got a chance to win every football game. There's no question about it, whether you're at home or on the road. All right, we're glad you're with us this week. Stay with us. We'll come back and look at first half highlights from Saturday's football game right after this. The earthquakes you see in movies are one thing, but real life is a completely different animal. Just because you can't predict an earthquake doesn't mean that you can't prepare for one. In the event of a real earthquake, you should drop, cover, and hold on. Visit ready.gov slash earthquake and practice what to do to keep you and your family safe in the event of a real earthquake. And you'll be seen as a hero by your family and your loved ones. Visit ready.gov slash earthquake today. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. 
Welcome back to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bison's a 26-21 loss on Saturday down in Arkadelphia. And coach, your football team was ready to play. They were fired up. Your defense would be on the football game, uh, on the football field to uh, to begin uh, the contest, coach. And uh, I know it was a great atmosphere for football on Saturday. It really was. You know, we kind of let those guys get started on with a really good kickoff return. But, you know, you can see on that highlight right there, we got a deflection by Arthur Akers. Uh, crucial down, forced them into a field goal, and considering where they started that drive and how explosive their offense is concerned, that was a big win for our defense, no doubt, to hold them to a field goal. Uh, this is Brandon Gates, you know, a short kick into the wind, and uh, you know, that's not ideal for a return, but we made the best of it, got it almost out to the 30 yard line. You know, first drive was awesome. Uh, this is mid triple. Great block out in front of him. Get the ball to Eric Kelly, who had a great ball game sure for us until he went out with an injury later in the ball game. Uh, and this is Park uh, running the double option. We come back and run mid triple. We get the ball pitched again to Eric, and he does a great job of, of making a big play out of something that was you know pretty well defended. Uh, this is the fullback give, and boy, Matt was. He, he got a shot on that play, but it set up this next play, which is just the quarterback fall off of the off of the triple option look, and Park takes it in for a touchdown. We're up 7-3. to three. Had to feel good with the way your team responded right there, and now defense is going to come up with a big turnover right a here. Huge play by Scott Middleton. Uh, you know, we cause the turnover. We get the ball on the one-yard line. We come out. We run the option. We get the ball kicked to Zach Shelley. Good blocking out in front, and uh, we were quickly out of the hole that we were in, almost out to the 40-yard line. Move into the second quarter with the Bisons with a 7-3 yeah, lead. This, this game ran off pretty yeah, quickly because yeah. both teams were running the football. We run the toss here to Eric Kelly, and uh, you, know, you can see right there we got our big tackle, Gavin De Los Santos, out in front. Trying to work to get that blocker, but uh, didn't get an opportunity. We come back, we toss the ball to Eric Simmons. And he takes it in for a touchdown. Great blocking out in front of him, and that was a you know quick turnaround yeah. uh, with that turnover. Come back, you know you got to give credit to their quarterback Austin Warford, who was a warrior on Saturday. Played great, but you know we were able to get to him and sack him that time. Madison Furman with the sack. That's T.J. Winslow with the tackle for loss, uh, and they're able to drive the ball down and get it in for a touchdown and and make the score 14 to 10. Those guys really good on offense, really good football team just all the way around. Uh, and we get the play action to Eric Kelly again. Great pass by Park, great catch. We run the counter option. And we've got Park up the field breaking a tackle inside the 20 yard line. You know, our O-line had a great day. Uh, that's one we wish we had over again. Uh, Very late in the second quarter. Yeah, yeah, we're inside the Red zone, getting ready to score, and uh, you know we turned the ball over, and and uh, you know we got pressure from the backside. Park didn't see the guy, and so obviously that's one of those calls that you look back on and you say, man, I wish I'd have done this or that. But you don't second guess yourself. You go with the call that you made and live with it. And and uh, they were able to force a turnover and kept us out of the end zone. And instead of as we talked about earlier, going in at halftime 21 to 10, we went in 14 to 10. Still with the lead, but you know we obviously felt like we left a score out there. Was it safe to say that that series maybe was the biggest play or the biggest series basically of the first half? Washita scoring, but your team coming right back down the field. Looked like you're going to be up two touchdowns right. maybe at the half. Well, we felt like, and I think this is true, that you know they never really stopped us in the first half. We moved the ball uh, you know, consistently. We were able to, you know, to rattle off some big plays, and uh, obviously, as I said, if we'd have put that one in, it'd have given us a, a big cushion. But at the half, 14-10 with the lead, you had to still feel good going into the halftime locker room uh, with that big of an uh, the atmosphere and just everything going on. Their homecoming in Washington, right. you had to have some momentum going to the locker room with the lead. We did, and you know, we held them to 10 points in the first right. half. That's a very explosive offense. Uh, one of the best in our conference, and we had moved the ball, as I said, consistently, and uh, felt like we had uh, a really good plan, and we're going to continue to execute that plan in the second half, which we did uh, as the game played out, but obviously we got to the end and weren't able to close it out. 
So at halftime in our highlights, the Bison's up 14-10 at this point. Stay with us. We'll come back and look at second half highlights right after this. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. This is why you took a second job. While you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. While you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making home affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE today. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. At this stage of our show, the Bison's leading 14-10 as we go to the third quarter. And coach, as we look at third quarter highlights, your football team uh, would get the football to begin the third quarter. Another good return by Gates to begin this second half. And uh, this is where the Bison's typically really do well in that first drive of the second half and uh, did did well moving the football. Right. We started half. off just like we wanted to. Is you know We feel great about having that ball to start the second half. We get the ball pitched right there to Eric Kelly, and uh, you know this was a, a it was bitter, a first and twenty play. That yeah, was a big. It was bittersweet because you know he pulled his ham on that play, and and we were not able to use him the rest of the game. Uh, we don't. We did not score on that drive. Got stopped on a fourth down, and Washtenaw took it down and scored. And so now uh, the game has changed a little bit. Seventeen to fourteen, we're behind, but we again we still feel great about what we're doing on offense. Uh, I guess the, the factor is how few possessions both teams ended up having in this game. That was critical. Yeah, time of possession almost even, uh, just over 29 minutes apiece. There's the, the counter option again to Zach Shelley and the handoff to Michael Latu, who had a great game for us on Saturday. Both of our B-backs that played the most, Michael and uh, uh, Matt Tennyson, I'm sorry. Both ended up having really good football games for us, graded out highly, and, and were effective running the football. Down 14 or 17 14 as we go now to the fourth quarter. Yeah, we run the trap to Michael. Uh, you know, they're, they start playing a little softer with their, with their defensive ends, their five techniques. We felt like the trap would be there, and it was. Uh, then we come back and run the option again. Good block out in front by Zach Shelley, and that's uh, uh, Logan Best, who really did a great job for us. And then we give the ball back to Michael Latu and look at that run. He was not going to uh, be denied. He was not going to be denied. And that's, of course, that was a go ahead score for us. You mentioned Logan Best coming in. He had a couple of big carries uh, to get first downs in the football game. He did. And, and Logan blocked well for us, too. That was huge. Uh, he really came in and gave us a great lift, which is what you want a guy to do when he is presented with his opportunity. Very proud of Logan. Young man from McCrory. McCrory, Arkansas, absolutely. You know, we get the field goal blocked, you know, that, that was a very low kick and we got pressure in the middle and we're able to get it blocked and here we go with this possession and, and you know, we start off by giving the ball to our fullback and uh, as we said, we, we were very successful with that play throughout the day. Come back, run the option, that's Logan Best again, you know, great play, long gainer, we're in great shape. Come back again and run the option to Logan. Not as much of a crease, but you know, look at the yardage we're gaining. We still got a ton of yardage. Now that's one we wish we had over again. Uh, you know, Park knows that we don't ever want to pitch the ball when we're under duress, and we did. And but you know, Park has done such a fantastic job for us this year as a quarterback, and and he is continuing to get better, and he'll grow from that experience, no question in our mind. Yeah, we told the. Paul and I talked on the sideline and I said, you know, just be real aggressive here because we, you know, if we're going to give up a touchdown, we need to have enough time for us to get something on. And we did. You know, we had a minute and 40 seconds. We still had a timeout left. Uh, you know, I talked to Zach about this play. You know, that's not something we want to do to, to bring it out, uh, you know, when you don't have any blocking. 
tough play here, and it was fourth down. That was a real tough play. You know, we we thought we had something going on that on that route combination, and and we're not able to, to have time to throw it, which you can understand. You know, they've got uh, they've got pressure in that situation. They know they've kind of got us where they want us, and you know, when we're in that at, at that stage of the game, trying to come from behind with a little bit of time left, and it's fourth down, so they kind of bring the house. Normally, you know, we protect the quarterback great, but that situation, he didn't have much of a chance. You talked about the turnovers on the road. Obviously, right. uh, the two turnovers, Washita turned it over one time, and uh, a big difference in the football game there. And Washita very, uh, very good on third down, eight, eight of twelve on third right. down. Right, and I think a part of that you have to, you have to credit to their quarterback, Austin Warford. Very difficult to him up on third down, and you know, one of their best running plays, really mm -hmm. this entire season, has been. Him dropping back to pass, finding finding him a lane that's open, and then you know making you pay for it. And he's really dangerous in those situations. Dalen Skidmore from Houston, Texas, led the team uh, defensively with 13 tackles on Saturday. Dalen had a great game. Plays with such energy and passion. I mean, you know, Dalen's a a team leader. He's a team captain. Uh, a guy that's very well respected on our team for the way he works and the way he plays. And then Trayvon Bigelow had another big game for us. Uh, you know, he was very dominant, and uh, we're so happy to have him back. Those were our two defensive players of the game, and uh, proud of both those guys. Proud of our entire defense. I mean, as I said early, that was a very difficult offense to defend. And uh, the fact that we basically held them to 24 points, you know, I really felt like if we did that, that'd be enough for us to win. And uh, it should have been, but it didn't happen. And so, as I said earlier, we learn from it and move on. You talk about being proud of the defense. Washita able to get in the red zone six times and only scored on four of those six time, right. trips. Right. And, you know, that's what we've done historically in the last several years is we've been really good in the red zone. We might give up some yards in the middle of the field, but in the red zone we're going to, you know, we're going to force a force you to attempt a field goal or turn you back on downs. And, and uh, you know, those guys are doing a great job. I know there are positives that you will take out of this football game, even though it was a loss as you move forward in a right. big football game this week. What are uh, the big positives that you really took from the football game? Well, I think the first is just how hard we played, uh, you know, which is what you want from your football team. You want them to show up in a big game, in a, in a big game atmosphere. As you said, you know, their stands were full. It was halftime, or I'm sorry, it was homecoming. It was, uh, you know, a nationally televised game, uh, a lot on the line for both teams, and our guys really showed up, played with great, great effort. Great passion, great energy, just like we knew they would. And uh, you also learn that sometimes the ball doesn't necessarily bounce your way, and when you, when it doesn't, you got to deal with it. You know that's part of life, and uh, it's one of the lessons that we hope that we learn from the game of football. Stay with us. We will come back and look at the conference race. It is really heated up now, and also get a question for coach and look ahead of this week's game with Henderson State right after this. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. One day. When the glory comes, it will be ours. Dr. King, what's your next move? A march from Selma to Montgomery. Selma is loud for every man, woman, and child. We will not wait any longer. In front of a crowd. Oh, 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 eyes have seen the glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Welcome back to Harding Football with Roddy Huckabee. After the Bison's loss on Saturday, Arkansas Tech also lost just across the highway to uh, Henderson State. And coaches, you look at the standings, four and one. There's five teams right there, and what a race in the Great American Conference. And, you know, that's one of those things that we shared with our team on, on Sunday night is, hey, we're, we're hurt because we lost, but look at the conference standings. We're tied for uh, first place. All of our goals are still right in front of us. We still got a lot to play for, which, you know, I didn't have to tell them that to convince them that we still had a lot to play for, but we certainly are in, in uh, 
we may not be in the driver's seat, but we are in the car, okay? And uh, we're going to determine who's in the driver's seat these next few weeks. All right, now it's time for our question from a student, and uh, we'll get that right now for Coach. Hey, Coach Huckabee, my name is Josh Robinson, and I am from Memphis, Tennessee. And my question for you is, could the winner of the Great American Conference have two losses this year? As I said, as I've continued to say, our students come up with some great questions, and uh, you know I appreciate that one. When I was talking to the team last night, I shared with them my thoughts on the conference race this year. It's a lot like the SEC, the Big 12, the Pac-12, the Big 10, the NFL. Uh, the top teams in the conference uh, are going to beat each other up. And my message to them was the team that persists is going to be the team that wins. And we want to be that team. We want to be the team that persists. So I'm hoping that when the season is over, uh, you know, we only have one loss, uh, but we're not going to get ahead of ourselves. We're going to play Henderson. That's who we got to play. We're not going to worry about down the road. But I do think it's conceivable that we could end the season with a lot of teams with two losses, and uh, it, that could be the way it plays out. Uh, that's not what we're going to plan on. But I do think it's conceivable with the balance that is in the league this year. Just look at the way things have played out so far. Uh, my message to them also was, boy, you got to protect your home turf. And then you got to play great on the road. You know, We gave ourselves a chance to win that game Saturday on the road against a really good football team. I think that's what you ask for. That's what you continue to ask for. Protect your home turf. Give yourself a chance to win on the road. And uh, that's probably the formula that's going to be end up being the championship formula for whoever wins it. Maybe the hottest team in the league coming to First Security Stadium on Saturday night, Henderson State coach, and uh, they came up with a big victory against Arkansas Tech, who before Saturday had not lost a football game, and a uh, big right. one this week with the Reddies coming to town. And it's amazing to watch uh, Henderson on film this year, Billy. You know, th this is a football team that is set scoring records and passing records galore the last few years. You know, they've been almost 100% an air raid football team uh, with Kevin Rogers and with the bevy of receivers that he had to throw it to. But if you look at them now, they're playing football a lot similar to what we, the way we play. Uh, they're running the football. You know, they have thrown for about 150 yards in the last two ball games combined. But they ran for over 300 this past week against Arkansas Tech, who has a very strong defense, very strong defense, especially against the run. They are playing great defense. And uh, when you watch them, you are very impressed with their talent level all over the place, too deep. Uh, they have an outstanding secondary. They have an outstanding front. Their linebackers are as good as anybody in our league. Uh, they shut out Southwest Oklahoma, who the week before scored 58 points against OBU. Uh, they basically shut out Arkansas Tech. Arkansas Tech scored a touchdown with about a minute left to go in the game uh, to make the score 17-7. to So uh, <clears throat> we're going to have our work cut out for us, and it's going to boil down to what we've been talking about. Uh, you probably are going to get limited possessions in a game like that. You're going to have to really take advantage of those opportunities. You've got to protect the football. You want to turn them over and, and steal a possession or two. And then you've got to make a play in the kicking game, a positive play. And uh, we need several of those uh, this Saturday. And that's the approach that we're going to take. And I'm sure they're going to take this, a similar approach. The football game will be played at First Security Stadium. It's our final night game of the season at First Security Stadium. 6 p.m. start time, Coach. And we have a lot of Bison fans that, that watch your show throughout the week. Talk to them right now about coming out, getting loud, and, and really supporting this team. Well, you know, these guys are definitely worthy of support of our fans. You know, they, they are just the kind of young men that you want wearing the Harding University name, representing the Bisons. Uh, and they're going to play great on Saturday. It should be an awesome atmosphere. The weather's going to be great. 6 p.m. kick. Hopefully the tailgating area out in front of the Gaines Athletic Center is hopping. Uh, we are really looking forward to this opportunity to play in front of our fans. We haven't had that many opportunities this year and we're looking forward to this one. Coach, I always enjoy being with you. Best of luck uh, this coming week. Have a great week and we'll see you again next week. Thank you, Billy. That's all for this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. Thanks for, be for being with us and we'll see you next time.
This is Harding Football with Coach Ronnie Huckabee.